All right. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Again, my name is Diego. Um, I'm the CTO of Capitlin. Uh, I'm also the creator of the convector framework uh, and a couple of other tools that we have around. Uh, Covalent is such a company that we focus on uh, doing or trying to make a blockchain development easy uh, for developers and companies as well. Uh, we are basically an end-to-end -end platform and we have, uh, we have developed tools like Convector itself, which is a framework to create a open uh, smart contracts, it's an open source framework, uh, all to the end um, to deploy those contracts to uh, production grade infrastructure. So that's basically uh, where we focus as a company. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, a special thanks to the Blockchain Netherlands Foundation. I don't know, Richard, you want to mention some? Uh, yeah, uh, guys, can you hear me? Can yeah. you hear me, Diego? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, a special thanks to Blockchain Netherlands Foundation, uh, to Rudolf that helped us to, to organize this webinar. Um, this, this foundation um, is a movement, a movement that, uh, you know, organizes blockchain related events like webinars uh, in collaboration with um, hyperlayer uh, groups or organizations like us, for example, with the idea to create awareness and stimulate, you know, adoption for blockchain and DLT uh, technology. And I want to say that, uh, that uh, Diego said a uh, special thanks to Blockchain Netherlands with this opportunity and to support us in, in this webinar. Thank you very much. Cool. All right, uh, Convector, let's talk a little bit about Convector. Convector Suite is uh, uh, an enterprise grade tool set to create uh, smart contracts. Uh, right now we focus on the uh, hyperledger uh, fabric, but uh, it's not especially made for hyperledger fabric itself. Uh, it's kind of wide support. Uh, and there isn't the roadmap uh, support for our blockchain technologies uh, in, the, in the near future. Uh, it's right now being hosted by the Linux Foundation. It's actually the repository is hosted in the, in the hyperledger labs uh, group right now, and you can find that as an privilege labs slash convector, and you can come here and check out the, uh, the docs and the code itself, uh, made a pull request or set up an issue if you are interested on that. Uh, but yeah, and we are on the process of making the framework a uh, fully official hyperledger uh, project. Uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, uh, it will be now an official project and it will uh, move out of, out of the iPolator Labs uh, repository. Uh, again, a little bit about what we do as a company is uh, we focus on making blockchain easy. So uh, on the deployment side, uh, what we do is uh, we take uh, people that are uh, logged in in a single cloud provider, deploying a single blockchain network uh, in there. It can be either uh, through a cloud provider, it can be either through a blockchain as a service offering, and uh, things like that. Usually they all manage the infrastructure for you. Uh, so you're just a strictly, uh, uh, you, you need to strictly run your infrastructure in, in their uh, data centers and things like that. What we do is uh, we basically decouple the, the infrastructure from the blockchain components itself. So without any participant can have their own data center or their own cloud provider and be connected in a blockchain network as it is supposed to be right there. Uh, blockchain is a decentralized technology and this is supposed to be the path for that. So we, we help our, our customers and clients to uh, do remote multi client deployments and, and supporting them by doing monitoring and security. And uh, we also help them with Convector while doing their uh, development, testing, and uh, deployment to, to those platforms. So, typical customers in, in our uh, section looks like uh, they, they typically come with a case where they, they need to provide or they need to create. A blockchain project that uh, can be a proof of concept or a production uh, finalized project 
and they rely on us to set up the overall architecture of how this solution will look like. Uh, I mean, uh, we're going to put like several smart contracts uh, to manage uh, your use case and things like that. Uh, we help them develop the solution. If they are not capable to do so, we automate the testing. Vector has a lot of testing functionalities under the hood. Uh, and we help them also to automate the deployments to their continuous integration, monitoring the overall environments, and even creating the infrastructure environments via API. So, uh, Another way that we are uh, serving uh, people in the world as convector is by helping them migrating from Hyperledger Composer. So as you may have already know or heard, um, Hyperledger Composer has been deprecated since like a year ago. It was uh, noticed that uh, they were going to deprecate the project. And a couple of weeks ago, they officially deprecated the project. So there is a lot of people that was left in the, in the blank like um, without support of the framework that they were using for their proof of concepts, Convector, we have seen a lot of people migrating from Composer to Convector uh, just because uh, we have a lot of similarities on the concepts that we manage, although we are uh, not putting any extra layers on top of the blockchain. Uh, so it's mostly like developing a native contract, but with some high level concepts as Composer was doing. So uh, just explain the overall ecosystem uh, that, that, that we have in phase. Uh, we have three phases. We have a, a, a develop phase where you use Convector. Uh, if, uh, if it's suitable for you, uh, Convector is, it actually has a, uh, actually between the time that I did this presentation and now it has increased a little bit more. So it has more than 60,000 downloads already um, on, on NPM. It has some good features like mock testing. So you can set up some mock data for your test and make sure that your contracts are running right. It has some type checking. Also, uh, it has a, JSON, a REST API. So if you were like familiar with all these kind of features in Composer, you will be have the same features in Convector. Uh, and more function. Convector is based on JavaScript, so you can virtually use any package uh, that is it is uh, available on the NPM repository or any other uh, repository for Node.js. Uh, and we have our community built around the Discord, so you can join at any time our community. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, you can join there and we can start a conversation from there. Uh, the next section will be the, the, the book section. For this, uh, we have this tool called Hurley. Hurley is also open source. Uh, it, it is part of the convector suite. Uh, and what Hurley does is create hyperledger uh, networks on your local machine using Docker. Um, so all you need to have in, installed in your computer is just Docker and it will start up all the components for you, link them correctly uh, so you can just start testing your codes instead of like figuring out how to set up a local Hyperledger fabric network for you. Because this is at the beginning when you're starting developing contracts, this is the first thing you have to figure out how to do is to create your Hyperledger network. Uh, with Hurley, it's just a command. It's, just, it's literally just a single line. We'll see that in a couple of minutes. Uh, and you will have a network with the amount of organizations and users and channels that you need for your scenario uh, to test your, your contracts, right? So it has some cool features, like it, it has live debugging, so you can create a contract and start contracting your, in your network, but put some breakpoints on it. So you, if you're having a book or if you're having a memory leak on your contract or things like that, you're gonna start up the Node.js development tool, uh, development tools and put some breakpoints on it and like changing variables and things like that. So you can better like to book your, your contracts to, to find your problems. It, has, it also has hot reload. So if you make any changes to your contract and you're running on the book mode, it will automatically reload your contract so you don't have to go and install it again. 
uh, and it has a uh, private data support. So if you are developing any contract that uses Hyperledger Fabric hyper, uh, private data, it will help you. Um, it will help you set that up uh, with just some basic configurations. Uh, and on the third phase, we have the deployment phase, uh, and it, this is now when you uh, go went through the develop and the book phase, and you're ready to go to production. You can just use Forma, which is our or uh, uh, offering uh, as a company uh, to do deployments on uh, Kubernetes clusters. So you can either do a deployment on a single environment just to do some development and QA stage, or you can either set up a high availability cluster and install all the components in that, uh, in that environment, which again is not our, our cloud, it's actually the customer's cloud, so it will be installed the contracts on your own infrastructure under your control, right? Uh, a little bit about the roadmap and the things that we support. So Convector right now supports Hyperledger Fabric officially by us. Uh, I thought there is nothing limiting this support because it has a decoupled model. So Hyperledger Fabric is not built in the core of Convector is actually provided to an external adapter that we have created. And on the same thing, you can uh, add support to multiple other blockchain technologies inside Convector. Uh, in the case of Forma, Forma right now supports Hyperledger Fabric in Corda. So our, our nature as a company is to be uh, protocol agnostic. We want to grow and support uh, on multiple blockchain technologies, this is, uh, these are the ones that we are focusing right now. And in the roadmap, uh, there's uh, this, that one that you can see here. Uh, about the cloud technologies that we use, we currently support any major cloud provider in their Kubernetes offering, and also on Kubernetes and bare metal. So uh, if you're interested, you can just take a look a little bit more about this in the, in the link below. All right. Uh, yeah, without more, I will jump uh, into the example that I want to present you guys today. Uh, I, I created an example where we are going to do some copy traceability uh, using, using Fabric and using Convector and all the tools that I show you just about. Uh, this example basically is made of, uh, we have multiple producers. In this case, we have both Alice and Josh and they all have a single uh, territory where they grow up coffee grains. Uh, they, will, they will export a batch of coffee grains. They will sell this batch into a roast coffee producer. And this roast coffee producer, after buying all the batches from the original producers, uh, it will combine just a portion of this package and a portion of this package and a portion of this one into a single uh, roast uh, roast batch, and this roast batch at the end is going to produce an end product that is going to be uh, the coffee, the, the finalized coffee, and we will have the information about all the all the informations, all the participants involved in this process, as well as uh, the coffee quality or the coffee, the information about the location where the coffee was uh, growth and things like that. So this will uh, pretty much uh, work as an example on how you can, uh, first of all, join some models in here and then split the information and keep track of all the information in the blockchain and give trustability to, well, in this case it's coffee, but it can be virtually any other any other asset, right? Uh, by the way, if anyone is having any questions, uh, they, you can either uh, speak and interrupt me. I, I, won't, I won't bother about that. Or you can send me a message as well. You can send a message in the, in the Zoom platform and I will take a look at that as I can. Right. Um, Convector also has a tool called Convector CLI which is used to generate new projects. So if you're just getting started with Convector, uh, you can come here and go to GitHub 
of vector CLI and uh, check out mostly the documentation of it. Uh, if you're just in a hurry, you can just uh, install it globally on your computer like this. And then you can just go and generate a new project by doing uh, something like this. Come. Um, new actually let me let me do let me do an example of that count new my chinko so i will create a new project for my chinko and you see uh just in seconds it created me a uh, full structure of this and if i open this um chinko right uh you'll see i'll have uh and a structure here up and running for me to, to get up and running. Uh, virtually what it creates is uh, what we call some mono rep, mono repo. Mono repo is a repository of multiple uh, small repositories or packages. Uh, it depends on how you define this uh, inside the same project. So in this case, we'll have a single main project, which is uh, uh, this overall one. And in here in the packages, will have multiple small uh, projects, which are going to be all the chain codes that we create for uh, my big project, right? And, but uh, at the beginning, we'll create just a dummy, uh, dummy structure, and we'll take a look at the concepts real quick. So in convector, uh, yeah, actually, let me, let me go back to the, to the graphic project. In convector, uh, we work with, uh, a really, uh, really common pattern for software developers, which is uh, the controller model pattern, uh, which most of the software engineers are really familiar. Uh, this uh, model controller pattern is uh, made so you can, in the model, describe how the assets are going to look like. So in this case, we have uh, a participant class here, uh, by the way, Convector uses uh, TypeScript, uh, if you haven't seen that as well. Uh, TypeScript is a superset of uh, JavaScript created by Microsoft. It's uh, pretty popular these days. And what it helps you is just extending the capabilities of JavaScript by providing some typing. And by providing some typings, we can get uh, typing information and type checking uh, for your contracts, which is something really useful if you are uh, making a smart contract, you want to be sure that the data that you're working on uh, is the one that you thought. So, but to create a model, we just, we just need to create a class uh, with the name of our model and extend the convector model. And then we can just go and define some uh, properties for my model. There are just two properties that are going to be required for every model, which is a type uh, to identify uh, this model in particular. And the second one is going to be an ID to identify uh, the, the instance of each of the models, right? Uh, besides of that, you can pretty much uh, generate any other property that you need for your project. Uh, so in this, case, uh, in this case, I am uh, registering a participant model. And in this participant model, I'm going to be uh, registering all the participants involved in this example. Uh, so for this case, I'm just defining the type, I'm defining a name for them, and I'm defining an identity, which is going to be an identifier, uh, a cryptographical identifier about who they are in, the, in terms of blockchain, who the user is, so I can uh, track this down and give permissions to certain actions like selling their own batches and things like that based on the identity. The identity is going to be uh, the certificate of the, of the fabric users sending the transaction. So since only, only the, the one that has the private key will produce a transaction containing the certificate of that user, I can, I can read and store that certificate in here and use that as a mechanism to authenticate the users inside the, inside the chain code, right? Uh, so pretty much those are the properties that I'm defining here. You'll find those uh, funny decorators in here. Those are decorators that come in the convector package. You will see the, we have a, a couple of decorators in here. Those uh, basically help you validating 
uh, your smart contracts. So you don't have to do some check-ins uh, when you're getting the functions. In this case, uh, I'm, I'm making sure that every time I refer to a participant model, I will require it to have a property name. If it doesn't have a property name, uh, I will reject the, I will reject the transaction because the, the model is not uh, it's not complete. It's, it doesn't fit with uh, the specs that I that I specified, and this will all all happen automatically for me. The convector framework will will take care of this. Uh, we also have this validate uh, the creator, which is going to transform. Uh, if you're familiar developing uh, smart contracts for Hyperledger Fabric. Uh, for raw hyperledger fabric, just like uh, native, uh, you will you will you will probably know that your arguments are passed as a string. So all the arguments that you receive on your functions are all passed as a string. Uh, but this is really not useful because uh, sometimes you will need an object, a number, and things like that. So most of the time in your contract functions, you will find yourself like casting all this kind of data to the ones that you were expecting it to be. And this can sometimes lead to some issues if you forgot to cause, cause one of the, of the values of the parameters passed to you. So Convector figures that out for you so you don't have to do any casting. All you need to do is to specify in your models what are your data going to look like. In this case, if I need a string, I will make use of this job library, which is an open source, it's published on NPM as well. Uh, and it has a lot of validations, so I can just do job that a string. I can do job that number if I'm expecting a number, or I can use some useful things like uh, job. Uh, if I'm making a string, I can tell it, okay, uh, I need this string to look like an email. So if I'm expecting an email in here, uh, just by putting this uh, operator in here, uh, the convective framework will make sure that whatever comes in this property looks like an email, otherwise it will reject a transaction for you. So you don't have to even worry about this. Uh, and how you use their models uh, is in your controllers. The controllers are basically the functions that you're going to be invoking from the outside world in the, in the blockchain, right? So in here we have a control named participant, uh, which is extended the convector controller, and it will pretty much define some functions and flag them as invocable. So any functions in here that is an invocable function is going to be exposed in the chain code to be invoked uh, from the outside world. Uh, and you can either have more functions in here without the invocable if those are like uh, local utilities for you. Uh, but the ones that you want to expose have to have this uh, decorator in here. Uh, the other things that you will have to put is uh, this param so convector can cast the, the param that is passing to you correctly. In this case, I am expecting, I have a function register and I'm expecting that I get a participant parameter in this function. So I'm putting the param decorator and I'm passing the, the model that I previously registered, the model that we just saw uh, seconds ago. And convector will make sure to, call, to cast whatever is being passed to this function as a string uh, to look like a participant. If, it, if it's able to do that, it will then uh, put me the values in here in this, in this value. Otherwise, it will, re it will reject the transaction because it doesn't even look like a participant, right? So at the moment that I get into this function body, I can rely that I will have all the information that I need in here, participant. I will just focus on my business logic and my business logic and the things that I care about in this project. So, I will start by making sure that uh, this participant has not been registered already. So I'm using the, the participant the participant model has some useful uh, methods to query the, the ledger for you. So it has this get one, it has a couple of other ones. It has a get all uh, example. It has a history method as well. Let's see, history. Ah, uh, history is in the instance. Let me see. History. History, yeah. Uh, for example, and this will return you all the historical changes in the ledger for this model, for example. Uh, so the models are pretty much uh, the tool set that you need to query the, the ledger. In this case, I'm just making a get one. I'm passing an ID and, 
and I'm checking if this uh, ID exists, I will throw an error because it has previously been registered on the ledger and I don't want it to be registered twice. Otherwise, if it has not been registered, I will just assign the property identity to uh, the property this sender. This sender in Convector is uh, a special a special token or a special uh, key that will retrieve you the whoever is invoking this register function on the outside world. Uh, this sender is going to have the certificate of the of the person or the participant invoking this function. So this way, I can assign the identity to this participant, to this sender, and later in some other transactions, I can just authenticate the user if, uh, just by looking and comparing if identity is the same as this sender in that other function to verify if they are the same user uh, who, who is invoking this, this transaction, right? Um, other than that, I will just uh, do a participant save to save this data in the ledger or in more real terms to uh, store all this information in the ledger and send this response to the client so they can endorse the transaction and commit it to the blockchain. Uh, pretty much all the functions look uh, very similar. In here, I'm just making a get uh, to retrieve one of the participants previously registered. If it doesn't exist, I'm throwing an error. Otherwise, I'm returning it as a JSON. So it can get go, uh, it can return this back to the client. Uh, same thing with this one. Um, since uh, we have already seen how the model looks like and how the controller looks like, let's take a look about uh, the unit test. Just uh, so you can see how you can consume any convector controller models. Uh, pretty much, uh, we try to reuse the convector uh, models and controllers as much as possible in all the stock in all the stack, in your controller, in your backend, in your front end, uh, everywhere, uh, because we don't, write, we don't want you to write uh, double logic about having some a specification for your chain code and then in your backend you have to write your own custom uh, specification in data models and then in your front end you have to do the same. We want to avoid that as much as possible so you can use the same controller model in your chain code, in your backend, in your front end or everywhere uh, that supports JavaScript, right? Uh, so in this case, uh, we are going to do exactly that. We have an adapter. Uh, remember I said uh, Convector is not specifically made for Hyperledger Fabric. It works by itself and the logic that provides the, the blockchain functionality under the hood is by providing adapters. In this case, I am providing, uh, I'm going to provide a custom adapter, which is a Mac controller adapter. This smart control adapter would emulate in, in runtime, in memory here, uh, a blockchain, a blockchain uh, ledger, blockchain peer actually. Uh, so I can emulate my transactions on runtime without even having to have a blockchain network up and running. And this is very useful uh, if you want to run your tests like uh, continuously, like on uh, test development driven or on a continuous integration and you want to, to run the test on every commit. And so setting up a uh, Hyperledger network every time and installing the contract is really time consuming, uh, but using the mock controller adapter uh, makes you really quick, makes you to run the test really quick because it, it doesn't have to go outside this, uh, this script to, to do everything well. So in here I'm creating this adapter and through this time factory, I'm going to pass the participant controller that I created before, I show you, and the adapter that I want to use uh, to talk with, uh, with the layer under the hood. So this is going to produce a convector controller client for me, which is I'm going to store in this, uh, in this variable in here. I'm initializing the adapter, telling it, okay, my contracts are, or my controllers are located in this, uh, in this location, uh, it's named participant controller, uh, and you can initialize the mock controller after with this information. Uh, and then I can just, uh, okay, just an, an extra feature that we have for the adapter is by creating uh, mock users on the fly. So with this instruction here, I am telling the adapter, uh, hey, create a user named test, 
uh, Nightcrawler user name test. Uh, this will create a private key and a certificate for this user, uh, just on runtime, just so I can test my identities and that I'm uh, handling the identities correctly. Uh, then I will just uh, create a new model. This is the model, remember, a participant, and I'm passing just the ID, which is the uh, I, uh, generating a random ID, and I'm passing the name of this participant. And now then I can invoke the chain code by doing participant controller. I'm calling this a special method with user, uh, which is to specify which user of the mark uh, adapter I want to use. In this case, I'm going to use the, the user test that I registered in here. And after that, I'm going to invoke the function register, which if you remember correctly, is the same function I show you in here, and that it requires a participant as the only parameter that it has. And uh, so I'm passing the participant in here, I'm awaiting this. So just by, just by doing this line, uh, in, in this case, we're using the mock controller adapter, but when we are running in a real blockchain scenario, in a real hyperledger public network, this will send the transaction to all the peers. It will wait for the responses. Uh, when it get the responses, it will compare to check they are the same and they all are responding correctly. And if they do, they, it will send the, all the transaction signatures to the orderer. Uh, if you are familiar with how hyperledger fabric uh, transaction flow works, it will send the transaction to the orderer and wait for a confirmation that the block has successfully been added to the blockchain. So this is a really small line, but Convector is doing all the work behind the scenes for you. Uh, so when it, when it reaches this line, this uh, line 37, you can trust that the data has been uh, successfully added and saved to the, to the ledger and you can rely and make calculations or operations based on that. Uh, just to continue with the test, I'm making use of a single function that the adapter has to query the ledger under the hood. And I'm doing this just to confirm that the changes were actually safe on the ledger. So I'm making a call to get by ID with the key that I was supposed to save. And this will return to me the model that I just saved in the ledger. And I'm comparing this uh, safe model uh, with the with the one that I just saved. For example, I'm comparing that the identity is equal to the fingerprint of the user uh, that I created above in here. So this is line, what this line is telling me is that it successfully assigned the right identity to this participant that I just saved using the certificate of the user sending this transaction which was test. Uh, this is pretty, uh, this is a really small test, but it has a couple of uh, things uh, really good to understand, uh, to, to check how Convector works. It's actually pretty straightforward, the testing. Uh, so yeah. Also, Convector has some end-to-end -end testing. Well, well, let's first of all take, take a look at the coffee chain code here. Uh, the coffee, uh, I think the time is flying. I'll hurry up a little bit more. Uh, in the coffee section, we have this grain batch. Uh, the grain batch, uh, as explained in here, so those are all the batches that we are going to produce from the participants. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. It will have some uh, properties in here. It will have a location of where the, the coffee was grown. Uh, it will have a height about the sea level. It will have the quality. Uh, and take a look at the validations that I'm doing here. I'm expecting this property to be a string, but to be one off, and I'm passing an array in here. And this array is basically all the possible values that I have in this enum. So it can be either, it can be either premium or standard, but if a convector uh, identifies that it was, uh, something else was passed, it's, it's going to reject the transaction that is uh, doing uh, this operation, uh, and this is kind of the useful things and the useful validations that I have with you. Uh, I will have a weight of the overall batch that I'm exporting. I will have a price. I will have an array of IDs of the of all the producers involved in this batch. So a single batch can be attached to multiple producers in this in this section in here. 
I will store the date that this was created in here and I will store the current owner. By default, at the beginning, the current owner is going to be the same participant that created the batch. But when it sells to someone else, I will just change the property owner to the ID of the other participant owning the batch. For example, when it sells it to the to their rose producer, uh, it will, the owner will be this participant and no longer will be Bob. Although in the producers, it will still, still keep a reference to all the producers that produce this batch. Sorry. Uh, all right, and uh, let's take a look about the controller. Just a little bit more. Uh, okay, so I have a function create grain batching here, which I'm expecting a batch, which is the model I just uh, show you. Uh, I'm doing the exact same thing, checking this batch has not been registered already, uh, which is a pretty straightforward operation. Uh, and if it does, uh, I'm going to make in bulk of this utility function that I have in the participant model, which is get from fingerprint. And actually let's take a look at this function. Uh, let's see, participant model. So get from fingerprint is a utility function that I have created in here. It will create, it will receive the certificate of a user submitted the transaction, and it will create a query to the coach DB uh, using using in the in the hyperledger fabric network. So I will do this by doing participant, which is my model the query. I am passing the object that I wanted to cast the, the, the result to, and I am passing the query. So in this query, I'm passing the selector and I'm specifying, okay, I need the, the, the thing that you select is going to be uh, using the type and I'm passing this type and using the property identity, which is, is this one that I have stored here, uh, to be equal to the fingerprint that has been passing me in this parameter. So uh, while doing this, I will just uh, ask in the participant model to return me the participant who has this certificate in their identity. So this is a, just a utility function to identify the participant. And now I can assign the owner of this new created batch to the creator or whoever returned this, uh, the participant who was returned from this function and assign the ID to this owner. After that, I will just uh, save the whole batch in the ledger and actually, okay, let me run something so you can see test two. All right. Actually, okay, let's let's explain this uh, first. So this is this is going to be the process that is going to take part in here. Let's take a look about the unit test of this section. Just so we can make this clear. Uh, what I'm going to do in here is having, uh, I'm having the same thing. I have in a mock controller adapter in here and I'm just initializing my adapter with the two controllers that I have for this contract, which is the coffee controller. I just explained the first function in here and we'll have the participant controller from the participant chain group, which is located in here. All those I wanted to be initialized in this mock adapter. Then I'm going to create three users, producer A, producer B and toaster which is actually no toaster, it's roaster, it's a, it's a typo, excuse me for that. Uh, I'm going to register the function uh, using the, the right uh, user I created above, and I'm going to create the participants in the participant controller. So once I created all the three participants, I'm going to create a new coffee grain batch. And as you can see here, I'm assigning a random ID, the location, hey, uh, all the producers involved in this batch, which in this case is going to be producer A and producer B, the price, uh, the height, the weight, sorry, and the quality of this coffee, and the date that it was created. And then I will send the transaction using uh, the user producer A, and I will send the transaction to create the gray batch. Um, at the end of this, and actually let me run this because we have an exact same test called end-to-end -end test doing the exact same thing in here, as you can see. 
But uh, this test, instead of using the mock controller adapter, is going to create, is going to use the fabric controller adapter. The fabric controller adapter is used to communicate with the fabric network itself. I have a, I have a hyperledger fabric network running already uh, with Curly. So you can see that in here, Dr. PS. You can see that I have already running uh, order uh, two peers in this section, peer, peer zero from organization one and organization two, and a couple of certificate authorities and the coach DBs for each of the participants of this network. Uh, so I will run my test and PM run test E3 just to demonstrate. Oops, oh, I changed the folder. So let me see, copy. Okay, E3. Okay, and I will I will leave this running uh, on the background because it's going to take a little bit since I'm running the end-to-end -end test with uh, using Fabric. But let me let me continue explaining uh, the rest of the code while this is running. Uh, the other, the other methods that we have in here, the copy controller is uh, basically uh, to get a current batch previously saved. Uh, but the most important function that I want you to take a look in here is uh, this one. Create the rows batch. And it's, it's a typo, it's a toast batch, but it's the function is create the rows batch. Um, in this uh, function, I'm going to create to get a toast batch, which is a model I haven't shown you yet. It's basically pretty much the same, uh, but for the for the solution that we are going to create in here, and I'm going to uh, get an array of composition, which is another uh, model that we haven't seen as well. Basically, the composition is an ID of an original batch and the amount of kilograms that we have, that we want to uh, take uh, part uh, into this uh, rose batch uh, that we're going to create. This is very much the composition of this uh, model. Uh, I'm going to take a look again, that there has not been other method uh, with this uh, other model, save with this ID. And then I'm going to take the composition, which is this array, of uh, portions of the of the main original batch. And I'm making here a calculation to make sure that the batch that we are going to use has not been used in its entire. So uh, the thing is, uh, we're going to take a portion of this, uh, of this batch the first time, and the second time we're going to take a portion of this batch the second time, and then the third time we're going to take a huge portion of this batch like this. Uh, but it, it's going to get into a moment where just a small fraction of this batch is available to make rose coffee, right? Uh, I want to make sure that we don't do double spending by making a calculations of all the batch available, all the, all the portions batch uh, of this huge batch, uh, how, how how long or how many of them has been consumed, and if there is enough kilograms available uh, to use in this next production. So this is pretty much the code that I have in here. I'm just uh, fetching the batch. I'm fetching the consumed portions. This is by another utility function using a coach to be query just to get all the portions with the same ID that has been already processed. And then I'm making a calculations about how much of the of that is uh, remaining? If the portion uh, that I'm going to create is higher than that, then I'm just throwing an error, uh, and by throwing an error, I'm just cancelling the the transaction, right? Um, under that, I just assigning uh, the weight, calculated weight, uh, and some producer and owner in here as well, as in the other batch, right? So the Test runs successfully. So let me go and show you uh, the coach suite of this solution. So 
So as you can see here, uh, this is uh, this is generated by Horley as well. When I start a Horley network, which I think I skip uh, and sorry for that. If you are just starting, you can just create a new network by typing for new. This will create a Hyperledger uh, fabric network for you, uh, which is the one that I have running in here. And you can see all my containers running. Uh, this will uh, produce this uh, database for one of the peers. So 5084 is going to be for the organization one, and 5184 is going to be for the organization two. Uh, in here, you will have all the database of the transactions made in the ledger. So as you can see here, let me see. This is a brain batch. Let me see where I have a participant around here. Um, mm -hmm. All right, let's take a look at the JSON. There's a batch, there's a portion, there's a portion. All right, I have a participant. So if you remember the participant document, what it will has is it has an ID, he has an identity, he has a name, and he has a type. So this is how it, it, it will store the information in the Coach TV and how you can consume all this information in Coach TV. The same thing with the batches. Let me say, okay, this is a great batch. So this batch is going to be uh, produced with ID, with a random generated ID, the location, the height, the date that it was created, uh, the current owner of this batch, the whole producers of this batch, take a look at this, this is an ID, uh, the price and quality, the type and the width. And you can also see a consume batch, which is the one that I, this is the, yeah, the portion. The portion, what it will have is a, a grain batch ID, which is a reference to the previous uh, model that I just showed you. It will have its own uh, ID, and it will have a toast uh, batch ID, which is going to be pretty much, this is uh, if you're familiar with non-SQL databases or actually SQL databases, this is pretty much a join table. So I'm joining, I'm joining batches with uh, rows batches and how much of this uh, batch has been consumed. So you can see that in here. This is the reference to the original batch. This is the reference to the new generated rows batch. And this is how much I am consuming from the original batch in this new one. So uh, this is how I'm keeping track of all the changes in the, in the ledger, right? All right. Uh, I think the time is flying. I still have so, a couple of things to show you. So. I also wanted to show you that Convector has a uh, REST API generator. Uh, so all the transactions and all the functions that I've made in here, I can invoke them through the API. So I just need to generate a file like this, an API JSON file in the root of my project. Uh, I will specify all the functions that I want to expose in this REST API. So I'm specifying, okay, from the participant controller, expose the register function as a post method and same thing with all the other methods. And then I will make sure to run com rest API, generate API, and I'll pass, uh, let me see, uh, a reference to, I always forget the signature of this, but you can pretty much find this in the documentation all the time they will need to know the signature of this command. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. All right, here. Count rest API, generate API, and you will pass a parameter dash G, which is uh, going to be the name of my project, which in this case is coffee. And I will pass a file to the configuration file. F, and this is going to be coffee config JSON. This configuration file is specifying all the controllers that I have in my project. So once I generate this, uh, once I run this command, it will generate me a server folder that I have in here. This server folder will be everything auto, auto generated with the routes that I specified in my API JSON file 
specifying the verbs that I uh, assigned to it, and it will create some function addressing these invocations. And if you come to the controller's function, what you will see is it's doing the exact same thing as we were doing in the unit test. It is calling the participant controller that register and pass in the participant that was passing the parameters and things like that. Uh, let me actually start this uh, REST API, so npm run, um, npx learn run server, scope server, which is start uh, stream. See? Mm -hmm. So starting the server. And you can take a look at this in, for example, I have a postman in here. Uh, so I will create a new participant. You, you see, I'm calling the localhost 8080, which is by default where the REST API starts. I'm calling the participant uh, register function, and I want to register a new participant. Uh, I'm assigning the ID, I don't know, 3623. And I'm uh, creating a new participant named Diego. Let me see if it's gonna start, yeah. So I will send a transaction like this. And I got 200, okay. So if I take this same ID and I go to, uh, let's see. Let's see, it's participant. I forgot the URL, let me see. I'll create a get participant gets if I remember correctly yeah with the ID I just register in here right let me remove this uh huh and it just shouldn't have the body none right and I will send this transaction and you can see how it returns to me the participant that I registered previously. And as an addition, it will have the identity, which is this identity is uh, from the user invoking this transaction, right? Uh, the same thing with all the other methods, I can invoke them uh, into, I can invoke any of them with the corresponding uh, method and parameters as, as they are needed. Uh, and yeah, pretty much this is uh, this is the REST API working on top of your controllers and models. And one last thing before uh, I finish just presenting is uh, you pretty much have your project done already. You created your controllers, you created your models, you created your unit tests that you can put to run in a continuous integration or continuous delivery. You create your REST API. So you pretty much all have all your code ready to run. And now you need to go and deploy this somewhere uh, to be able to show this to the boss or uh, to finalize your proof of concept that you already got. For this case, you have a format, which I was talking to you at the beginning of the presentation. Forma is uh, uh, the infrastructure site of the company that you can just create new networks, new hyperledger networks uh, in format. So if you just want to create a new hyperledger uh, network, this is just as easy as come to you and specify, hey, I want to create a new main test. Um, I want this to be running in my local data center in my public uh, infrastructure. I don't have any, any cluster created here yet. So I will just specify for easiness and make it quickly to set up in uh, the Warcibu uh, servers. And I wanted to create it, uh, this function, this uh, organization with the participant uh, Diego, which, which is another organization that I have created here for my, then I click create, this will send a request to the other organization saying that uh, that I want to create a new hyperledger network with them. And if they all get approved, I can uh, start my network. I already have one network running in here, which is the Kafka Trustability Network. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, I have control over all my ledgers, all the created ledgers. By default, it creates a public one. And in this public ledger, I have installed the Kafka uh, chain code already. If you take a look, 
uh, your code, you will see that Convector will generate this Chenko Coffee uh, folder in here, which is the compiled JavaScript version of the contract with all the all the controllers and all the models uh, joined in a single package. So you just need to zip this and, and upload this to uh, to the to the former platform. And then just a few clicks away, you will have uh, your network up and running with your contract ready. Uh, and it has some cool stuff like you can go and check out about the all the containers that you have in your in your Kubernetes cluster for your network. By default, these are the containers that it creates for you. And you can think uh, you can take a look at things like uh, monitoring. And uh, let me take a look. Uh, if you can take a look at the, both the metrics of your cluster. So you can see if uh, there is a certain container, for example, the peer containers, which are usually uh, consume a lot of, of resources. Uh, you can keep them like monitoring in here, uh, figuring out uh, if they're running too much, or you can even uh, take a look at the, at the fabric statistics. So if you are having any block count or uh, increasing too much in blocks, you will see all that information in here or the transactions per minute that you are executing, things like that. And same thing with the logs, you can just come in here and take a look at the logs of all their containers that you're running, for example, in here, the orders and things like that. Uh, so yeah, without more, I think uh, this ends the presentation. I don't know if anyone is having any questions I see in the chat. Uh, right, I don't see any questions. I don't know if anyone like is having any question right now. Nope, looks like no. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I appreciate uh, you had the time to to. To, to come to the meetup and, and look about the presentation. If you are really interested on in working in Convector, remember it's all open source and it will always be, you can join us, our community on Discord. It's actually, yeah, there's uh, some useful links that you may find uh, useful. Uh, if you go to community.pavilionx.com, uh, it will take you to our Discord channel. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty active almost daily. We have a lot of questions and a lot of comments about Convector in there. So if you're having any issue, come join us and we will help you with your problems. Uh, otherwise, if you are like having any idea on, on things that you can do to Convector or if you're interested on in collaborating to uh, the, the, the project overall, uh, you're always welcome. So yeah, thank you very much for your time. And I think this is, this is everything from my side. Uh, I don't know, Richard, if you have anything.